Hey, it's Francesca Moy, the Meetup Queen, and you're listening to the 360 Entrepreneur with Jan Ilunga. This is episode 226, and today's conversation is all about what meetups and in-person events can do for your brand and business. Here we go. Welcome to the 360 Entrepreneur Podcast, the show for entrepreneurs and small business owners who dream big and want to do bigger. Join some of the world's top entrepreneurs, internet marketers, and best-selling authors as they share their inspiring stories, their struggles, and give actionable tips that will help you build, grow, and promote your online business. Here's your host, Yanni Lunga. Hey, hey, welcome, welcome, welcome to the last episode of the 360 Entrepreneur Podcast for the month of August. As you heard during the intro, this one is all about organizing meetups, in-person events, and why you should do that and how to go about it. And helping us with that is Her Majesty, the meetup queen, Francesca Moy. The show notes page for today's episode can be found over at yanilunga.com for a slash episode 226. I want to dive right into it because Francesca has some valuable pointers for you and I. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Here's the interview with Francesca, the meetup queen, Moy from empoweringevents.com.au. Everybody, in this episode, you're going to get some great tips, and I'm pretty sure you're going to get some laughs as well. Joining us today is an Italian-born, Australia-based author, mindset coach, who helps business owners with an already successful time-for-money, one-to-one model boom their business through social media and events. She's also a networking, events, and marketing strategist known as the Meetup Queen. And you guessed it, she's here with us. I'm so excited to welcome on the show, Francesca Moy. Hi, Francesca. Welcome. Benvenuta. Hi, Jan. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. It's so exciting. Yeah, it it is indeed. And it's interesting because I usually make fun of my accent because I say I have a Macroni accent, but today there's going to be a a second Macroni accent because you're Italian as well, right? (laughs) I know. That's so funny. People that listen to this be like, what's happening with this accent? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. I, I definitely can relate to that. And Francesca, before we dive into the content of today's interview, there is a question I have to ask you because I know that you have a couple of nicknames and one of them is the meetup queen which I said but you have a second one so would you like to share with everybody what that is well they call me the meetup queen but now they start to call me the crazy Italian lady (laughs) (laughs) right (laughs) and why do you think that's the case Well, you know, here in Australia, everyone is, um, I think, you know, very polite and and, um, very posed. And and here comes this crazy Italian lady that talks about shut up and boom and boom your business and all that stuff. And they're going, okay, what's happening here? (laughs) And I love it. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's it's nice. And obviously, you know, you are the good kind of crazy and you bring positive energy and you know we love crazy and positive energy here on the 360 entrepreneur so i'm sure it's gonna be a lot of fun i think the first question i have to ask you for for kind of getting the interview started is if you could tell everybody a little bit more about how you got started and focused on meetups because i know you do different things but one thing that has worked out very well for you and we were talking about this a little bit before we started recording are in-person events meetups so can you tell everybody francesca a little bit more about how you ended up getting started with meetups yes so i think meetup found me (laughs) um i started my my life coaching business um probably nearly three years ago And I was going out there to networking event and I was going to find my way around to find my very first client and nobody wanted me. (laughs) And I didn't know how to, you know, stand out in a crowd and I didn't know how to build that relationship with people and to start to make some money because I had sort of a time frame. I was like, if I don't make money in six months, I'm going to run out of my savings (laughs) and I had to go back to a job. (laughs) (laughs) And all of a sudden I said, you know what? I don't need to prove anything to anyone and I don't need to be a follower anymore. I'm going to become a leader. And I just started this meetup group 
And I literally thought it was crazy, but I did it. And I started this meetup group called Personal Development Brisbane. And in three months, I got fully booked as a one-on-one life coach. I just couldn't believe it. It was insane. I, I used to get 40, 50 people at my events. And then I used to do smaller groups for like five or six people. And that's when I used to get the clients. And it was fascinating because eventually I started to get other coaches, life coaches and business coaches and marketing mentors coming to my meetups. And I was like, what, mm-hmm. what is it? What do you want? And they were like, we want to learn your strategy. I'm like, shut up. I can teach you. <laughs> And that's what I did. So I created this program and yeah, here I am. Uh, Fast forward six months from when I started um, the the meetup training, I've got a six-figure business. And now two years later, we are on my my way on a seven-figure business, which I have to pinch myself going, is this really happening? (laughs) Well, I mean, I think... You you said, Francesca, what meetups have done for you in terms of, you know, changing your business and, and I'm I'm sure your life as well. And a question I have to ask you is, I mean, you said it, you are based in, in Brisbane. And, you know, nowadays, because of the internet, it is so easy to connect to people, talk to people. I mean, this interview is an example. You're in Australia. I'm in Finland. We can work with people. And now with live video, we can even share the same time with the person by doing things in real time. But why do you think is important for entrepreneurs, marketers, coaches, authors to still consider doing face-to-face things, events, meetups, and things like that? Well, you know, um, the dream of everyone is to run a successful online business where you can do it from your comfort of your home and all that. But honestly, Jan, there is so much noise out there, so many people trying to get attention on Facebook and all the social media platforms. There's like, who am I going to follow? Who am I going to trust? Who who is really the right coach and mentor and and, um, educator for me? And I think that by bringing people, I say, bring people from Facebook into Meetup and face-to-face. And in face-to-face, you can wash them, you can clean them up, (laughs) and then you hang them back on Facebook. And once they met you face-to-face, they will be um, following you forever because they met you and they tasted you and and they had an interaction with you and they are going to follow you. And there is people that follow me since three years ago that I don't even know that they do. And then eventually they come to my <laughs> workshop and they say, I've been following you for three years. I'm like, oh, really? So, so it's a very, very, very powerful. And some people might not come at every single meetup. I've got 30,000 followers. Obviously, they don't all come to my meetup. I would have to need a really big room, <laughs> um, but they, they watch and they follow and other people, um, like you said, maybe in the US or in the UK or on the other side of Australia, they watch me online and they see consistently fully booked room, months after months, week after week, year after year, and that is ticking boxes in the brain that says, this woman is serious about what she's doing and she's consistent and she must know what she teaches because look at all these people. Right. <laughs> yeah, look at all these people following the crazy Italian lady, right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know, right? So she must be really crazy or they might all, all, all be crazy. Who knows? <laughs> right. <laughs> no, jo- jokes aside, and is it okay if I call you Fra? Yeah, yeah, you can. Italian people call me Fra. In Australia, they can't say that, so they say FM. <laughs> for, for, for us, coming from Italian-speaking countries, FM is more of a reference for radio, whereas Fra is pretty, is pretty common. <laughs> and you said it, it is important to uh, focus on face-to-face because you said once somebody experiences you, live face to face they they're gonna get kind of marked they're gonna remember that for a long time and as, as you said is so noisy online and you know everybody is launching blogs and podcasts and videos and this and that whereas in person you can really be yourself 100% and connect with people on a personal level now fra a question related to the 
quote unquote logistical aspects of a meetup. If somebody is here with you and I and is thinking about organizing their very first meetup in their city, they have kind of an idea of what to talk about and things like that. What would you say are the things they should think about before they actually get their hands dirty and organize the meetup? Are there some things to consider? Yeah, well, for sure. It was first of all, they, before they they launch the first event, they need to launch the group, and that's then that's the part that a lot of people get lost. A lot of business owners, um, they are so um, concentrated on making money and making this work and monetize it that they forget that meetup is about community. Meetup is right. not a platform where you go in and you sell your business. Meetup is a community where you go in, uh, sorry, a platform where you go in and you start your own community so that you can start to spread your word and your message so people know who you are, what you do, and what values you have. So the first thing that we need to do is to make sure that we choose the right name for the right community. So let's make an example. If you were a life, um, a health coach that you love health and nutrition and you want to help people get healthy, if you start a meetup that's called Healthy People Meetup, um, nobody will come, or for sure, right. <laughs> or for sure, not the people that you want, right? Because if you are a, a health coach, you want people that are not really that healthy, and they're not going to go and catch up in a meetup that's called Health meetup because they'd be like uh, I'm not gonna fit in I'm not the type of people that are in there right because I'm not healthy and they're not that's not their passion that's not what they want to spend the you know their time in so throughout the the three years I've helped over 140 people um, throughout the process of starting their own meetup group and Facebook group and we found out that when you start um, that group it's got to be about business. We've got to target business owners at the meetup that really work the best, which it will be like a, a networking event, an event that uh, people want to go to because they want to, you know, monetize it. They want to find other clients. They want to find other business owners. They want to hang out with like-minded people. And then at that event, if you are a health coach, I would say once the clients are in and they want to learn business stuff, you will have a great speaker, and that speaker will be about marketing or sales or whatever it is about business. And then you will talk about how important it is health for business owners, how much more energy and productivity and everything you would have if you if you were um, healthy, right? So at that moment, the people are in the room, they're going to listen to you because they're right there. But the night is not about you as a, as a health coach, it's about them. It's about them getting clients. It's about them, um, you know, getting to know each other. And at that moment, two magic, magical mm -hmm. things happen. One is that that organizer of that meetup, the, the health coach, get a chance to be seen as a, as a leader and be seen as a person of influence because they know the speaker, they got, you know, in touch with the speaker, they, they are the, the person on, this, on stage, they are not one of the followers right and the second thing that happened is that you take a lot of photos <laughs> and then you put them on Facebook and everyone will go oh my goodness what's happening to this health coach nobody <laughs> knew them and then look at that a fully booked room and everyone raving about this event what's happening and that's how you start that momentum makes sense yes it absolutely does and I love how you kind of combine both offline and online components so that is not that people come and attend a meetup and see you one time and that's it, goodbye, arrivederci, but you have the online community that you build first, where people get to interact with you, get to interact with one another, then they come to a meetup and then they keep interacting online. So I like how you, how you kind of combine the two uh, dimensions. And you mentioned Facebook groups. I know you have a thriving Facebook group, the Entrepreneur's Abundance Mindset. And like in every episode, I'll make sure to link to that as well as everything else we're covering, including your site, empoweringevents.com.au in the show notes. Now, the question I have for you, Fra, is I know you believe in Facebook groups, 
because you have one yourself, you have helped your clients. There are other platforms one could use to build online communities like Slack communities, Google Plus communities, I don't know, LinkedIn groups. But would you recommend people to focus on Facebook specifically and Facebook groups? Look, I, I would, to be honest, I would. There's 1.86 billion people on Facebook every month. <laughs> uh, I would say that that's the, the you know, the number one um, platform that is working in the world at, at the moment. So um, unless that change, which I don't, doesn't look like it will, um, I would say that it's the best place to, to hang out. People spend more time on Facebook than watching TV nowadays. So so you, you want to be there. You want to be there. You want to be seen as a leader. You don't want to be a follower anymore. If you're a business owner, you want to step up and have people uh, looking up to you. You know, if I if I meet you for the first time and you don't you know nothing about me, no background, know that I'm an author. If you don't know anything about me, and I tell you, hey, you know, if you want to join my group, I've got a Facebook group. I've got four thousand five hundred people in it, and it's pretty active. I love you to join. Straight away, your brain will think, what? Oh wow, right. Right. <laughs> That's the first the first opinion that you will have on me is that I'm successful and I'm a leader and I'm a person of influence because I've got 4,000 people plus in my, my own Facebook group, right? And then obviously I I top that up with I've got 12,000 people in my meetup in Australia. So, you know, just uh, already I've got 20,000 people that are hanging, you know, in my groups, So that's a really, really, really powerful statement to make. And I don't need to tell you anything else about me. I don't need to prove yeah. to you anything else, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's true. And and one thing I think is great about Facebook, as you said, you know, so many people spend time on Facebook. There aren't really barriers of entry because people who are on Facebook know how to join a Facebook group, how to use it. And also Facebook is great for us community leaders because they are they keep adding new features to groups. Now we can do Facebook Live. Soon there's going to be, or actually at the time we are recording this, they have just announced that they are about to release the feature of adding more than a person on Facebook Live. So there's going to be more and more uh, empowering tools for us that allows us to to build authority, as you said, and, and really use that as a sort of business card that when somebody connects with us and as you said know nothing about us they're gonna be like whoa okay let me check out who this fra is because i just joined this group and it's really active there's plenty of people she really knows her stuff i want to learn more about her and what she does and one thing you talked about fra that i thought was interesting is that when you talked about the meetup and you talked about kind of the how to organize it or what to think about you talked about having a guest speaker. So would your recommendation be whenever possible to have you as the host and have a guest speaker, a guest expert that joins? Yes, always. You know, like, like you're doing right now, um, Ian, you're, you are adding value um, in the same time as interviewing me, right? So people that are mm-hmm. watching you, they will know um, that they will like you. They will get that um, uh, connection with you because you are the host. But obviously, you're also doubling that up. They like you even more because you bring experts every time to talk about something that they can learn. That's why people keep following you, right? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, no, jo- jokes aside, yeah, I... I, I <laughs> I agree with with uh, you know w- with that point of view and yeah and I think it's important also because I think that when it's more than just a person who kind of runs the show let's say there is always a conversation that happens which is which is great and sometimes because of that interaction and that conversation that starts there are interesting things that pop up that may have not popped up if I were only you know speak or be here on the podcast by myself or you would be hosting all of your meetups by yourself so i like that i know fra that on your blog you have an article where you share advice for filling a workshop so you started to share some things with us you said start building the online community first start getting people engaged and things like that do you have other other uh, pieces of advice and and strategies we can implement in terms of once we have built our online community, we started to work on our meetup. What can we do to actually get people to sign up and 
show up for the meetup? Yeah. Well, obviously, the most important thing is that a lot of people RSVP to things, and nowadays they're so busy that they either forget or or the last minute. You know, it, it's important for you as an organizer to show people why they need to come along. And mm-hmm. if people, a lot of a lot of mistakes of organizers is that they assume that once someone RSVP, they're gonna come. That's not it. So you need to keep informing them and not just keep sending them spam emails saying, come along, come along, come along, because they're never going to read them, right? <laughs> so it's going to be like interesting emails of like information that they need to come along to the meetup. So either, you know, um, the venue details and the parking details or the lucky door prize that we get on the night. And sometimes the most um, uh, read email is when you ask them to give away a lucky door prize at the meetup. So they feel like they, they are they're part of it. They feel like they can participate into this um, event and they want to come along because now there's something in it for them. Yeah. So um, there's all little, little touch points from the moment that the RSVP to the moment that actually the event starts. And one of them will be also to send them an SMS or uh, a private message to make sure that people know that you care and that actually you want them to come along. And it's not just, you know, mm-hmm. a, a, another event is actually a networking community where people actually, um, it's a support group where people actually support each other uh, and they will get a lot of value from it. Yeah. 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 I think it, it definitely makes sense. And I like the fact that you talked about keeping in touch with people without being pushy. So even though we may send an email or a message with a piece of information, like you said, let's say on the parking or how to get here from the airport or whatever. It's good because we provide people with a piece of information that is actually useful. But at the same time, by doing that, we implicitly give them a reminder of, of our meetup that is coming up. So we don't tell them, hey, come to the meetup. But by telling them how to get to the place, we remind them the meetup is coming. But what, one of the, the most important one is give them access to the, the people. So say, you know, I'm looking for more Akido Prize. Uh, please, if you're, if you're interested, come on the night and come earlier and give us uh, and bring the, uh, the Lucky Door Prize with you. Or, you know, um, we're looking for a sponsor for the meetup. All you have to do is, to, like, you know, maybe put $50 and, and we'll give you a, a, a chance to speak for five minutes. You know, things like that, that people um, really want to be part of it because obviously everyone wants exposure, yeah? Yeah, and I, I, I think that really gets people engaged because they become uh, kind of co-creators or co-hosts in a way, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. And when, when they feel part of it, they're going to come along. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that. And I have a question for you, Fra, about the website meetup.com, because I was telling you that's how I found out about what you do. And I know you have some meetups on meetup.com. So could you talk for a moment about how you think that platform fits into the conversation we are having? If somebody's thinking about meetups, is that a site to look into or? Yeah, absolutely. Meetup.com is, it's, it's a really good platform. It gives you the chance to, um, again, have your own group. And then it's got all these amazing feature that you can just put an event in and people can pay you via PayPal. And it makes it so easy for us to run an event is fascinating. And, um, it's very cheap. And, you know, I was, um, I was actually, um, a lot of people ask me, do you get commission from Meetup? Because like the thousands of people that started a Meetup group because of you, <laughs> I'm like, well, actually, no, no, not yet. I actually have the intention to get in touch with them and, and see if we want to collaborate. But so far it's all been like, I know how good it is for people to have their own group and their own community that is, is I talk about it every time. <laughs> I love it. And, and is it okay for you, Fra, if in the show notes page, I will also link to your uh, meetup.com page so that people can look at it? Of course, of course. It's the, the biggest one is Entrepreneurs Abundance Mindset Brisbane. Um, I've got six groups all over Australia, but that's the, the biggest one and the one that I'm more active in. Great. Yeah. So as I said early on, 
If you're here with Fra and I, in the show notes, you're going to find the links to everything we're covering, including the meetup.com page she just mentioned so that you can take a look at it. And when it comes to the hosting of the meetup, Fra, so we have planned it, we have worked out the logistics, we have invited people, we know people are, are starting to walk through the doors and, you know, it's time to get started. Do you have any advice in terms of the actual hosting of the meetup? Maybe are there some common mistakes you have seen some of your clients or even other people make when it comes to actually hosting the event itself? People sell too soon. <laughs> it's not <laughs> about selling. It's about building that relationship. So I say all the time, the first meetup, the second, the third one, even still now, when I do events like that, networking events, I don't sell from stage. It doesn't need to be. You're already building so much trust and, and planting so many seeds that you just need to keep watering the garden a little bit and the flowers will show up. <laughs> so I'd say, yeah, no, not need to sell and, and just chill. And people, you know, sometimes try to be too professional and, and that becomes a bit fake. And I say, just be yourself. Just pretend it's like a, a night with your best friends and best business buddies and you're just catching up and, and make it fun. Don't just have this boring networking night that nobody wants to come back to. You want to make it fun, you want to make it engaging, and you want not sell. Well, you heard it. Some advice from the meetup queen herself. You need to add a little bit of craziness and fun to your meetup so that you have a good time and people have a good time and they definitely want to come back. And thank you for sharing that with us, Fra, the fact that we should focus on really making people have fun and not try to sell every single minute of the meetup. And if we bring technology back into the picture, I have to ask you because I know we are live streaming on Facebook. You you are you are uh, live streaming this, which I think is great. And I'm curious, what are your thoughts on using a live streaming tool like Facebook Live, for example, during an in-person event? Is it something that you would recommend uh, using? Yes, no. Totally, totally. That's when I say that I bring, take people from Facebook and I put them to meet up and I wash them and then I hang them back on Facebook. So this is what, I, what that means. So by <laughs> hanging them back on Facebook means that I'll do Facebook lives, I'll do stories about my, you know, the before and after the event and during, of course, and people that feel like they're missing out, you know, the FOMO effect, the fear of missing out, those people will definitely come to the next one. So I usually people ask me that all the time, how do you get sales this fully booked event all the time? I'm like, I just use the momentum. As soon as people feel like they're missing out, I'm, I'm selling already the next event. So that's how I get fully booked. I don't stress about putting bums on seats. As soon as one event is finished, I've got the next one fully booked. Boom, it's done. Boom, mic drop. <laughs> And and if you if you're here with Francesca and I and live streaming is something you're interested in but maybe aren't sure where to to start from in the show notes you're also gonna find the links to the double interview we did with James Wassom where we covered live streaming from many different angles. Now I have to ask you to kind of a follow up question on what you just said, Fra, because you talked about leveraging the momentum. So do you have any advice on kind of um, how to follow up in a way to a meetup? So some things we can do at basically as soon as the f a meetup is over or the following days to kind of still get people fired up and maybe already get them to book the next meetup or something like that. Well, you want to do it, it you want to do it before they left the room. On the night of the event, when it's towards the mm. end and you, you already gave them the lucky dog prizes and everyone is pumped up and they're all happy, you say, well, guys, would you like to come to the next event for free? And they will go, uh, yeah. All right, go jump on Meetup now. There are 10 tickets for free. Just go and get them right now. The first 10, tico, 10, 10 people get them. So they will jump on it straight away and you just announce the next Meetup just on the same night so that you go when you go to the public there will be already 10 people for free and 10 people that paid five dollars ten dollars twenty dollars to the event 
and that will get the momentum going. And before this, you know, the, the end of the week, you will have already the 30, 40 people that, um, that you want, you know? Wow. That, that's great. I love, yeah, you, you're so right. I think it, it makes sense to, to kind of, uh, capitalize on people's attention because when, you know, the event is still ongoing, people's attention is, is focused on us. So it makes sense to start building buzz on what's coming up next. And I said early on, Fra, that you have the Facebook group, the Entrepreneurs Abundance Mindset. Your website is empoweringevents.com.au. I know that you are all over the place. You are on Facebook, you're on Twitter, LinkedIn. If somebody would like to connect with you, or maybe they have a question or something like that, what would you say is the best way to do that? Just connect with me to the Facebook um, page, Francesca Moy, the Meetup Queen, uh, and there will be myself or my team will get in touch with them for sure. Perfect. I'll link to that in the show notes as well. And this has been a fun, a very interesting conversation, Fra. I want to say thank you so much for being here with everybody and sharing your expertise, fun and craziness with us. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for having me, Jan. It was so much fun. I loved it. And I love your accent. Oh, great. Well, you know, uh, great great minds think alike. So macaroni accent people usually... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, jokes aside, I have one final question for you, Fra. We've talked about meetups, we talked about technology, we talked about what to think about before the meetup, the logistical aspects, how to get people to show up and so forth. The final question is, do you have any advice on things people can do to kind of scale and keep organizing meetups? I mean, it's something that we've started to touch upon, but is there maybe something you would like to add? I um, saw a pattern in all my clients. They come to me because they say, Francesca, I want more clients. How do you do that? I want to fill my workshops. How do you mm -hmm. do that? And I say, no worries. Come to my mafia. Do you know that my course is called Mafia? <laughs> it, it means Meetup and Facebook International Academy, the mafia. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, it? I do. <laughs> So I said, don't worry, come to my mafia and I'll teach you all about it. And then guess what? Three months after their first course, they go, I'm fully booked. What do I do now? I can't keep up with running all these events and workshops. I'm going crazy. And I said, don't worry. I now have a new product for my clients, only for my mafians, that I say, you need now some help. You need a virtual assistant. I've got five virtual assistants in the Philippines. The amazing women that work for me and they are addicted to my business. They love it to bits. And that's the type of virtual assistance that you want. So I say, don't worry, I'll fund you a virtual assistant and I'll train with my system, your virtual assistant. So you only have to do is show up at that fully booked event. Great. I love that. So you heard it. Another additional way to learn from Francesca Moy is to join her mafia. And Francesca, again, thank you so much. And, you know, hope to meet you in person sometime soon to have some fun and craziness. <laughs> sure, sure. Whenever you come to Aussie, just call me. And we are back. You heard it. Francesca said it. It doesn't matter whether you own a brick and mortar business or an online one, you have to leverage the power of meetups, of in-person events. She said it, she stopped being a follower, she wanted to be a leader, and she went with in-person events. So you and I should definitely do the same. The show notes page for today's episode is over at yanilunga.com for slash episode 226. Make sure to check it out because there you find the links to everything Francesca and I have talked about, her site, her Facebook page, the Facebook group she mentioned, her meetup page so that you can take a look at it. And you're also going to find the link to the Podcast Success Summit. Over the last couple of weeks, in the last two episodes, I told you about this year's edition of the Podcast Success Summit, my online conference all about podcasting, happening from September 18th to the 22nd. In last week's episode, I said that the sales are open right now. You can get your hands on the All Access Pass, which gives you lifetime access to all the events, video sessions, and panels of discussions as both video and audio. And that's not all. 
In addition to that, you also get access to over 20 exclusive advanced trainings with some of the summit's top speakers. And there you're going to learn more about crowdfunding, about monetization, advertising, growth, systems, content, audio editing, marketing on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, you name it. So all that and more is available for you with the Podcast Success Summit All Access Pass. The offer goes away in a couple of days, actually. So now is the time to act and get your hands on the All Access Pass at the early bird price, which actually is the lowest the pass will ever gonna be. So to wrap things up, final reminder, Everything we've covered in today's episode, including the link to the Podcast Success Summit over at yanilunga.com forward slash episode 226. Thank you for joining Francesca and I, and I'm excited about September. It's going to be a great month. So I'll talk to you then. Take care. Thank you for listening to the 360 Entrepreneur Podcast. For more tips and tools, head over to www.yanilunga.com.